Have you ever visited the doctor's office and wondered what exactly are they staring at on that computer screen? And is it going to help them better care for me? Our next speaker is going to address that in her talk today. Please help me welcome to the Brudex stage, Dr. Randy Foraker. I would like you to think back to the last time that you were in the doctor's office. And if you can't remember that time, go ahead and put yourself in Mary's shoes. Here she is with Dr. Jones. No doubt Mary has an acute problem that she wants to discuss with the physician today. But also Dr. Jones has several important topics to cover with her. And in the context of this healthcare encounter, you, just like Mary, expect that you are getting the highest quality of care possible. And I'm here to suggest that the electronic health record can be a barrier to achieving the highest quality of care possible. Many of you in the audience will think that I'm crazy because you remember these days, the days of patient charts, paper charts, where all of the patient data are stored on little slips of paper in this folder that may or may not rise to the top and get your attention in your next visit with the patient. The promise of electronic health records is that these little slips of paper, these little pieces of data will rise to the surface and will be right at the provider's fingertips at the click of a button. The reality of the electronic health record is that it is a lot like your computer at home. You might have a folder where you store photos from last summer's vacation. You'll have another folder yet where you keep your documents and another folder where you store your favorite music. In the electronic health record, it consists of different folders or different tabs where patient data are stored. There may be a tab that has all of the medications that the patient is taking. There could be another tab where there's laboratory results and blood work and yet another tab where the provider enters in all of the clinical impressions of that day's visit. And what has to happen in order for Dr. Jones to find all of the critical elements for Mary's care is they have to click around a lot. And there was a recent study done of emergency department physicians where over the course of a 10 hour shift, they documented 4,000 clicks on the mouse. So Dr. Jones is clicking around a lot in order to help Mary's care be optimized, but also has a queue of patients in the waiting room in which she's also going to conduct these clicks and try and find the most important pieces of data. And all of this has to be done in a very short time frame. The average patient provider encounter is about 15 minutes and the majority of that patient provider encounter is not spent actually talking to the patient about their health. It's spent hunting down data and entering in data into the electronic health record. And this was made very clear to me by a friend who told me that his daughter wanted to play doctor with him. And he expected her to ask him to lie down so that she could perform a physical exam maybe put an imaginary stethoscope in her ears and listen to his heart. But instead, do you know what she did? She turned her back to him and began typing on an imaginary keyboard. <laughs> we all want to know what's being entered into that electronic health record about us as a patient. And we want to know what are the critical pieces of data that matter the most to our health. You want to know, Mary wants to know, all of the patients waiting in the waiting room want to know. How many of you would like to see your own personal dashboard of health when you go in to see your provider? We developed a visualization tool that does just that, and it works alongside the electronic health record. And it's called Sphere. And I remember the moment that the idea for Sphere took shape. And I was at a table with a number of my colleagues Myself, I'm a cardiovascular disease epidemiologist, and I'm passionate about ameliorating risk factors for cardiovascular disease, but also other important chronic diseases that plague our society. To either side of me were experts in biomedical informatics. 
they understand the ins and the outs of the electronic health record and how to bring our idea to fruition from a technological standpoint. And then across from me, and also joining us by phone, were my colleagues in the internal medicine department here at Ohio State. And they had concerns about any kind of visualization that we would insert into the medical record. They did not want it to disrupt their normal pattern of care. They have enough interruptions over that 15 minute time frame that they didn't want just one more popping up on their screen to remind them and interrupting them at the wrong time. This is what we ended up developing from that meeting. So we took expertise from cardiovascular disease epidemiology, biomedical informatics, and also internal medicine to come together and build a visualization tool that exists right there nested in our electronic health record. And importantly, we listened to the concerns of the providers themselves. We inserted this tool in an asynchronous panel. And what that means, you can see it along the right-hand side of this rendering of an electronic health record. It populates automatically from electronic health record data and presents there in a static format so the provider can navigate around the electronic health record as they would like, but they can also zoom in on this important health dashboard at the appropriate time during their encounter. We built this visualization tool to not only work alongside our electronic health record at our institution, but also be scalable and able to be disseminated across all electronic health record platforms. Let's take a closer look at the important factors that we considered to be able to populate this visualization at the point of care. We turned to the American Heart Association and found health behaviors and factors that were most important to preventing cardiovascular disease. And in my own work and in the work of others, we've also associated these behaviors and factors with other types of chronic diseases, such as cancer. Cardiovascular disease is the number one killer of Americans, but less than 1% of Americans are considered ideal on all of these behaviors and factors. And what that means is precious few of us in this room are considered perfect on this metric. And what that means for Dr. Jones is she has a lot to talk about with her patients. So let's take a closer look at what this would look like for Mary at the time of her appointment with Dr. Jones. Right away, as Dr. Jones is talking to Mary about her health, she'll see across the top that Mary is at 60% health. And Mary's goal is to be at 100% health. So the next step is to determine what we can do about that. So if you look down the line of behaviors and factors along the left-hand side, you'll see a stoplight scheme of red, yellow, and green. Green tells you we're doing well. Yellow tells you caution, we need work. And red means poor this factor needs to be changed in order to reduce your risk of cardiovascular disease and other chronic diseases. So as your eye travels down this visualization, you'll see that for blood pressure, the color to the left of it is green. And that tells Dr. Jones instantly that Mary does not have to worry about her blood pressure. No treatments are needed. One step before that is smoking status, which you'll see is coded in yellow. And this provides an opportunity for Dr. Jones to tell Mary, great job quitting smoking. That is fantastic. According to the American Heart Association, you have to stay quit for 12 months or more before you can move to a green. So if you keep up that great behavior, you'll be able to improve your overall health. The next factor down is body mass index. And we see here that Mary is coded red for body mass index, which means she's obese. She would be yellow if she were overweight and green if she were normal weight. So again, this provides an opportunity for Dr. Jones to tell Mary exactly what she can do to move from a red to a yellow. We built the visualization tool to have slider bars and buttons 
so that the provider could manipu manipulate the data as they're talking to the patient. They can click another button and turn the patient from a smoking status of yellow to a smoking status of green. If you stay quit, this is what will happen. They can slide the weight bar down to show a patient how losing X number of pounds can help improve their health. So let's see what this would look like for Mary. If Dr. Jones goes through these steps and changes the smoking status for Mary, and changes her weight so that she moves from red to yellow, her overall picture of health moves from a 60% to an 80%. And you can imagine how this would be motivating for Mary and for you when you go in to see your provider. These are the tangible changes that I can make in order to improve my health. And my provider is often in it with me. They may have to do some things to help me improve my health they may have to prescribe me a medication to lower my total cholesterol, for example. So you can work together and you can communicate about this and use this tool as a decision aid. This may work for Mary, but does it work in the real world? Let me show you some real data. First, we measured all of these behaviors and factors at baseline in Mary's clinic. And then we inserted our visualization tool, Sphere, into the electronic health record for that clinic. And we looked one year later to see what changes occurred in those risk factors over time. And in the clinic that had access to the Sphere tool, we saw improvements in the proportion of patients that were at a healthy body weight. We also saw improvement in the proportion of patients who were diabetes free. These were changes that were seen over a one-year period. Before we celebrated, we wanted to see if all patients across the health system were just getting healthier on these metrics and maybe our tool wasn't doing anything. So we looked at another clinic and measured those same factors at baseline and one year later, keeping in mind that this clinic did not have access to the SPHERE tool. Instead of seeing an improvement in healthy body weight, we saw a decline in the proportion of patients at a healthy body weight. And instead of seeing an improvement among diabetes-free patients, we actually saw that the proportion of patients who were diabetes-free remained the same. We demonstrated that with a health informatics intervention, we were able to move the needle on health which was very exciting to us because we realized we had taken the electronic health record from that passive data collection tool into an active, actionable tool that could be used at the point of care. And we're also excited to think about the possibilities. So obviously this has great implications for cardiovascular health, which was how this tool was designed. But you can also think of countless other diseases that could be prevented or better managed with a tool like this. We successfully brought in data from the electronic health record in an automatic way. We can expand that to include other sources of data, genetic data, data from sensors or wearable devices, data reported by the patients themselves, such as quality of life. So any data critical to the health of a patient can be brought in right there at the point of care and communicated. Now our next step with Sphere is to commercialize this technology because we want to put Sphere in the hands of as many providers as possible. We see the promise for a health informatics visualization tool like Sphere to impact an entire population of patients. And we also want to be able to empower patients to be able to make the right health decisions that are going to impact their health positively outside of the clinical setting and be motivated to improve their health from one clinic visit to the next. And ultimately, our goal is to improve your health and the health of patients like Mary. Thank you.